okay. things that need to stop. And hopefully you're good to be. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we are good to go. Good morning. Welcome back. Uh, we're just having a conversation here with our guests trying to, you know, get everything in line on what we're going to talk about today. Today being a Monday is I on politics and I have two gentlemen uh, who are going to help me to talk about matters, politics and what they really understand by politics. But today it's a bit different. I have got young aspirants who are going to set their foot for the first time in politics how they're going to make it they are going to tell us they say that politics is not easy uh they're telling me that some of them get sick uh, for no apparent reason uh you know you go to the hospital and the doctor says that you're you're okay you know uh the pressure is too high um and that's nature of politics uh with me in studio i have got adam mohammed who he's um uh aspirant kamkunji constituency here in Nairobi county welcome to the show Thank you so much, Victor. And uh, uh, the immediate right here is Tony Kualanda, who is a seasoned journalist by profession. And he decided to say that enough with the pen, camera, and a paper, he's going to get into politics. Tony, karibu. Asante sana. I still have my pen and pen. You still have his pen? Uh, exactly. Uh, no, uh, once a journalist, always a journalist. And a notebook. And a notebook. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> okay. Even a politician, you have to have a notebook. <laughs> no, politicians don't have notebooks. They have notebooks with their PS. <laughs> but with you, you have yours with you. <laughs> Today, my PS left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we are coming to the close of the year, of course, and today we want us to talk about how do youth understand politics and the new aspirants, the aspiration for this particular country, uh, what do they stand for? Tony is vying for a member of county assembly at Manda Shivanga, that is in Kakamega County. He's going to tell us more about that name. Something may not get it right, Manda Shivanga. <laughs> okay. Karibuni to the show. Thank you. All right. This is, this is going to be interesting and going to be an amazing show. So talk to us. Get to know how you uh, want them to ask your questions because they're youthful uh, leaders of tomorrow and that is the way to go. To start with you, Adan, um, how is the ground so far uh, in, uh, in Kamkunji? It's, it's, it's a tough race, I might, I might guess so. Uh, first of all, thank you, Victor, for having me here. All right. Uh, of course, it's not an easy job, mm -hmm. and uh, politics is all about strategy mm. and the ideas you want to bring it on board. Yes. Uh, what do you want to share? So I think uh, uh, previously, to Lizoya, to the old guards mm. leading us from years and years, from election to an election, but this time, mm -hmm. as the youth of this nation, we are prepared mm -hmm. and we have what it takes and we are going to deliver you're going to deliver yeah for sure. do you remember that almost all politicians say we are going to deliver <laughs> i have your future in my hands yes and, and so uh, politically speaking you're right yeah and many don't deliver again they say we're going to deliver but they don't but uh, this time right uh, the voters are also enlightened mm -hmm. it's not like before where you just go rallies make noise and beat drums this time to na say ni mchoro ni mchoro yes okay we'll see uh tony is it ni mchoro yes. ni mchoro kabisa mm -hmm. as aiden has said uh, of course thank you for having me in sure, studio, sure. Uh, to this morning uh, ni mchoro ni strategy it is time of course for youth uh, you and i and aiden to really take up this mantle um our old guards we will not put them away we are not fighting our old guys we want them to rest mm. because we have seen they have taken us through what they can do but there is more which can be done and Aidan Moore, Aidan Mohammed and Tony Kolanda and Victor Olo have that capacity now to take this thing further because now it has stalled a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just from Manda Shivanga Ward uh, this, uh, this last uh, week, mm -hmm. weekend, where I gave out in partnership with CMC Motors a brand new engine, Ford Ranger engine, to an institution. It is the very first time a politician actually not even a politician, a person from Manda Shivanga Ward has donated an engine brand new to a Tibet institution. It's, a, it's called Manda County Polytechnic. That school has never had an engine from anywhere, not even from the governor of Kakamega County. But Tony Kualanda has made sure, as mm. he's saying, Michoro, Tunafanya Michoro and partnership to ensure people's lives in our communities. I would, I would put it this way. It's just Michoro because it's an election and you want to entice people. <laughs> After that, you, you don't pick up calls, Adan. You, you know, you, things change. Yeah, actually, I don't think so. You know, uh, if you want to change this country, mm -hmm. uh, we must reason 
with the people on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, a politician uh, who wants to come in and, you know, uh, uh, promises fake things, mm -hmm. and immediately after elections, or immediately you're sworn in, apparently you change your number. Yes. They no longer hear about you. They no longer see you on the ground. Uh, but this time, I think the script will be different. For me, uh, I believe countries have changed because serious generations took over. Uh -huh. And uh, we are going to do things different, my friend. Yes. Things You're going to do no things different. The same. That's, that's, that sounds optimistic. Yes. Things uh, will, no, no, but they will no longer be the same. Okay. Yes. I, I will get into that briefly. Uh, I will give you time to sell your manifesto uh, <laughs> later on in the program. But then now, let's talk about matters that shaped politics. Um, over the weekend, on the front page of our local dailies, we see Honorable Brailo Dinga and, uh, you know, the One Kenya lands are all over. And uh, the two leaders were in Mombasa. That is Raila Odinga and uh, Deputy President William Ruto. Uh, Mombasa, for a very long time, has been perceived to be an ODM stronghold. And uh, it seems that the Deputy President is trying to make inroads and to influence the voters. What do you really think, Adan, starting with you, uh, the effect that the Deputy President has so far made in the coast region, as far as influencing the voting pattern is concerned? I think it's clear. Uh, the DP made a serious progress. Mm not only in coast, but uh, in all corners of this country. Mm -hmm. He has been going around and talking directly to the voters. Yes. And uh, for us who believe uh, in, in the UDF fraternity, mm -hmm. uh, it will no longer be the same case in where people used to say, you know, this place is locked or this region is a stronghold of certain political parties. In UDA, uh, we are a serious movement. Mm -hmm. It's actually beyond a political party. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to deliver. Mm -hmm. in, in cost, uh, we, things will be different. Uh, you, how, how is it going to be different? Because for so many years, even during the Jubilee Coalition uh, in 2017, 2013, they didn't marshal as much votes as uh, Honorable Elo Dinga did. Uh, simply because uh, Jubilee and UDA seems to be different. Right. Uh, UDA, if you hear about the bottom-up economic model, mm -hmm. uh, many are saying, you know, the critics are coming out and saying, you know, this is n nothing called bottom-up economy and mm -hmm. doing that. But it's a serious agenda. And because of the agenda, the DP is selling. People are seriously going to buy it. And mm -hmm. uh, because of that agenda, the regions that were previously known for ODM followers or mm -hmm. uh, locked for certain political parties, we will have serious numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they say the ballot will count. Definitely. Um, Tony, what, what we are ready for it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Tony, when, when you look at uh, the influence that the DP has had, and Raila Odinga seems not to let go of the coast region, uh, what is this phrase frenzy about you know going to the coast because the deputy president has made several trips uh, to the coast region uh, do you really think Ray Ludinga will 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 uh, influence the wing scale come 2022 in my opinion I think in the past we've seen you yes. and I of course and Aidan, um, coast has been predominantly an ODM uh, voting uh, area uh -huh. uh, they've always voted uh, ODM wise however now, um, and you know, Mombasa is a very strategic uh, place in the country. It's an mm. entry point. It's, it's very, uh, looking at history-wise, how mm. very important it is, and especially with the people. Now, um, there's this gap that is between um, the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. And that is the gap that the DP is really capitalizing on. You remember that talk about dynasties yes. and then and these people don't have it. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Now that one is coming to play. Remember there was that talk about oh they fighting this. That is still there. Mm. And that's what the DP is now making sure that he capitalizes on in the coast region. And yeah. it will come into play in the next elections. Mm -hmm. That's why DP is spending time there. And that's why um, my good friend uh, on right Honorable Raila Odinga is also spending time there because he's worried mm -hmm. a lot of people in the coast 
are not very uh, well to do. Mm -hmm. There is that gap is so huge. Yeah. And the Madipi has made inroads into that particular area using that particular Michoro mm -hmm. or UDA uh, with the Deputy President uh, William Ruto. So that's why um, come 2022, if Raila does not dangle something very special mm -hmm. to the coast region, he might lose a stronghold that has always voted for ODM. Mm. And but now you see now the people now at the coast as you know, um, you remember, I mean people in initially used to like Raila because he used to fight for their rights. Mm. But now the handshake thing brought a lot of confusion. People yes. are wondering, uh, okay, this handshake, is it for you or is it for us? But there's some diehard people who are mm. the coast who will mm. vote for Raila. But there's some other people who will be like, hmm, I can see you're partnering with dynasties and you've let us to be impoverished at the Mom uh, in Mombasa. That's why he has to spend time at the coast. Or yes. else you lose it. All right. Th that sounds like, uh, you know, it's like a swing vote. Perhaps what you can say, because uh, when you look even more of the politicians, they concentrate on areas they perceive to be swing vote regions. And... Uh, M Mombasa is huge with millions of voters and we have got young registered voters right now. Uh, the biggest story here is that uh, all of them were in Mombasa, almost at the same time. The president was also in Mombasa for a different project altogether. But when you look at the numbers, even the pictures on the front pages we have, all of them are able to pull crowds almost at 50%. 50%. My question to you, Adan, is that uh, do you really think the coast region is already making the decision they are going to tilt towards the DP or they're still, you know, eyeing that position of is it going to be this way or they've made up their mind? I think uh, it's still too early. Mm. We have like uh, eight months to or seven months roughly to the election period. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there are a lot of other factors that going also to be in place between now and, and the general election. Mm. Uh, I think for me, the most important thing for either of them is uh, to maximize or, uh, you know, garner as many votes as possible. Yeah. But uh, DP, I think, is not the, f the past few months is not the, the first time mm. that uh, he went to Mombasa or Coast. Uh, he has been going around the country and, you know, mobilizing and talking directly to the voters. Mm -hmm. I think this time, the worst UDA can do is 50-50. 50-50? In, 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 in Mombasa. Or actually in Coast. Uh, there could be a scenarios where maybe after April, uh, there are a lot of, you know, governors who have now showed interest in mm -hmm. Mombasa County. Mm -hmm. uh, all of them, uh, except uh, Sarai, who is in UDA, uh, going for ODM side. Mm. There will be a fallout in the long run. Yes. But in UDA, we are very hopeful, and we are going to get numbers mm. in Mombasa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, definitely uh, different, like 2017. Okay. Yes. I'm interested in understanding one thing here. We, we are almost coming to a close of uh, this particular year, which many people have said that's been affected, you know, by the pandemic and what have you. But, Tony, what really stood out in this year, in 2021? You know, I... The, the handshake. Yes. Um, uh, I was very surprised. I was taken, not aback, but I was very, I was like, okay, things can change. And mm -hmm. if can, a handshake can happen, in fact, I can even tell Aida and Mohammed, I'll, I'll not be very surprised if mm -hmm. UDA and ODM came together. Uh, I know it's not something that can, people can think about, but a lot can happen in, in, in politics, the next seven in months. Anything is possible. Anything yes. is possible. And right. I've seen if the, <laughs> if, if, if the president um, could have a handshake <laughs> with his arch rival, mm. the right honorable Raila Odinga. I mean, anything can be possible. That's why that was one major thing that really was very outstanding during mm. this pandemic time. And okay, I commend the, uh, the right honorable Raila Odinga for actually doing this because yes. it really averted and stopped a lot of things and a lot of animosity and, you know, the hate mm. and all the grudges and stuff because people used to think, hey, now, what are you going to be fighting? Raila is going to fighting Uhuru and yeah. all that. So that one was put to bed. It was a strategy by the president to calm things down so they can work out. But now we are seeing if that can happen, what can happen next if Raila decides to take on, mm. uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Uru, uh, 
uh, root up yes. and say let's partner and let's make this country uh, you know move forward so that's the thing i'm thinking can happen mm. looking at the major thing of the handshake that happened between the president and the right one <laughs> and then is it is it possible to happen He's, uh, he's talking about the handshake. So you can imagine the scenario where the Deputy President and the Honorable Raylo Dinga are now shaking hands and say, my brother, this is it. So Raylo will have two brothers. Yeah, I think uh, politically, I, between now and the general election, I don't mm. think that's possible. Of course, you know, it's just a, politics is, is a competition, it's a game. Yeah. And uh, I, there's no much enmity. But I don't think UD and ODM, you know, Though, as you said, anything is possible in politics, I don't think that's going to happen because uh, David President is going is going for it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think there's no doubt that Baba will also be on the ballot. So the only way they can come, you know, ODM and UDA can come together, is if one one forgoes, but mm -hmm. uh, which which is not likely to happen, and. Uh, and Baba, and during the last uh, Azimio La Umoja uh, declaration in yes. Kisarani, uh -huh. he shows that he's on the ballot. And uh, I think it's between uh, the horses are two, and it's between him and, and the deputy president. Yeah. So I don't But I still think that the horses, we look, at, we look at the One Kenya Alliance team, they're saying that the horses are not yet two. Uh, yesterday they formed, you know, they signed a pact with the Mount Kenya uh, uh, Unity Forum. And they're saying that uh, they are still a force to reckon with. Is that the situation, Tony? One Kenya alliance um, with my, of course, uh, His Excellency, Msali Amdavadi. Yes. Uh, they have formed a pact with the Mount Kenya mm -hmm. alliance. I, I've seen, of course, with uh, Honorable Martha Karua, uh, mm -hmm. Honorable Kabogo, mm -hmm. and a uh, host of other uh, Mount Kenya leaders. Mm -hmm. However, One Kenya alliance... They are, they, are, they are lukewarm. When they do their activities, we don't see the flamboyancy. We don't see the fireworks around it. We don't see mm. the, you know, there is some noise about it. Uh, they do stuff and, I mean, it's not even making news. It's making, so, uh, not people are even think, talking about it. Yeah. Uh, now, it just tells you one thing, that uh, maybe they are waiting to be called or they are maybe they're just waiting to see if um the, the, the which one will be the best option for them to go so they're just waiting to see who will actually get into state house mm -hmm. however uh Musaliam Davadi, looking at his first soldiers, like the senator uh, Malala in Kakamega, has always been drumming and saying he will always be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. But in my own opinion, I'm sure, uh, looking at the history of Musaliam Davadi being in government, mm -hmm. it just clearly tells you Musaliam Davadi always looks to work with that particular candidate that is affiliated to the government. Mm -hmm. And in due time, in due course, mm -hmm. I'm sure His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, the President, will talk to Musali and tell him, yeah, watch Akwaribia votes, uh, my good friend was Imiola Umoja, stand with him, mm -hmm. let's, take, let's make this thing very yeah. easy. And that is one of the outcomes or one of the things that are going to happen with the One Kenya Alliance. It will break a lot of people's uh, One Kenya Alliance leaders, but that's basically it. Look at um, uh, Kalonzo Mshoka, mm -hmm. who is there. Look at Wetangula. Where have they always been? In government. You want to tell me they'll be against the government, and yet you saw the entire government machinery during the declaration at Kasaran. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that sounds uh, so hard on them, uh, but <laughs> I don't, I don't, they're still optimistic that they're the third force to reckon with. Yeah, true, they are the third force. Uh, I Personally, I don't foresee Musalia joining uh, Azimio Laumoja. Mm -hmm. Cause uh, he's because he's quite adamant. He, yeah, he has been, I will not say adamant, but he has been quite consistent mm. that this time around, uh, he will not be a pushover, and he will be on the ballot. Having said that, I think uh, they will be the third force, of course, if he goes with uh, Kalonzo. But again, the question will be, mm. who, where will you put Kalonzo? If, if uh, uh, Musalia Mudavadi says, come rain, come sun, he will be on the ballot. Yes. Where will you put Kalonzo? As a running mate again for Mudavadi? And because in 2013 he was running with for Baba, mm -hmm. same case for 2017, and last time he told us that uh, 
he will, he will only be foolish enough if he again becomes a running mate for Raila, right? So I think I only foresee one scenario for one one Kenya alliance where Kalonzo will be the flag bearer. I think there will be a negotiation in between them. I foresee whether Kalonzo will be the flag bearer and Musalia as a running mate. But in any case, if you put them in that uh, lineup, then uh, still the horses will be two. Yeah. It will be between debit president or or uh, and, uh, uh, Baba Raila Molodinga. Mm. Alternatively, in the event that Colonzo goes his way, then uh, uh, one Kenya alliance uh, fails to, to, to have the proper lineup. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Colonzo goes his way, Mudavadi goes his way, then still the horses remain the two. The two. Yes. Um, you know, it's quite interesting to say that because. When you look at what happened over the weekend, um, the deputy president was in Western Kenya, and he quoted and he asked, "What was Vihiga? Munataka umwami? Aende pandeli lingina mama kujawa tu hasla?" And a day or two later, when during a during a burial of his stepmother, Honorable Borelo Dinga, who was in Mombasa, flew from Mombasa to Sabatia, then back to Mombasa. And when Honorable, Kalons, uh, Honorable Mudavadi was asked, he said, I didn't know that Honorable Raylo Dinga was going to be here. I, he, he ambushed me. I didn't expect him. There were no signs of him arriving here <coughs> in a span of two days. What does that signal in your head politically? Tony? The art of seduction, Victor. Uh, happens like that. And I'm happy um, uh, Honorable Msali Mdava said he was not aware. And that, that's the element of surprise you give your girlfriend. As in when you're showing up with flowers, when you're showing up to say sorry if you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. It is very strategic. Yes. If it's maybe actually it was intentional or it was a surprise, it, it was both ways. It was a strategy mm -hmm. by His Excellency Right Honorable Raila Odinga to show up at that particular uh, event. Yeah. And trust me, there is nowhere where Raila will go without that host person no, knowing it. So that one I'm very sure. Protocols have to be observed. I'm sure Rebbe Musalem Davidi knew that uh, Right Honorable Odinga would land there. Mm. Otherwise, there will be chaos and stuff like that. But I'm happy um, Raila, Raila, Raila Odinga Baba did that particular gesture just as a way of seduction and telling uh, Honorable Musalia, Musalia, I know you are doing this, you are going to stand, you're going to be the third force mm. in the next coming election in seven months. However, if you change your mind, there is still room he for you. He actually even said that I am so sure that our paths are going to cross at some point. That's exactly the whole uh, plot that uh, Raila did. Imagine, Mombasa, kwa joto kimbia. It was, of course, we, we mm -hmm. African, we have to go back home and, you know, condole with our, with our fellow friends. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm telling you. And I'll tell Eden, he is a third force. And that third force will join up with the Azimio La Umoja. That one, take it to the bank. If I'm wrong, uh, please, I start, but I'm very sure mm -hmm. Honorable Musalem Davadi will be with Azimio. <laughs> Why have you finished this statement? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, Why are you talking about uh, will be with the deputy president? Because no, even the deputy I, president I, was I also quoting my, him in West. <laughs> I know where my colleague is going to. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, whether, whether I, of course it's possible. Uh, mm. I think he, he, he he supported uh, Raila in 2017. Yes. Uh, where people, and he was not the running mate. Uh, but you know, again, uh, the question will be, or the mathematics that need solution will be, mm -hmm. if Raila is likely to have his running mate from Mount Kenya region. Right. All right. In that case, where do you put uh, Mudavadi? Mm -hmm. Where do you put Kalonzo? If they shed off the interest and back uh, Raila is another case. But uh, for you, uh, whether this, uh, whether they join Raila or whether they, whether they join, uh, whether they don't join Raila, mm -hmm. uh, UDA is a serious movement. And uh, I will not say it will like be 2002, mm -hmm. but uh, personally, I believe. Uh, 
Ruto is going to make uh, is going to move grounds why, why in 2022. Is, why, just a minute, Tony. Why do you think Honorable Musalem Mudavadi is a point of concern here? And not Kalonzo and not uh, Gideon Moy? Or even Wetangula for that matter? Yeah, you know, uh, you, 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 Gideon and Wetangula don't have the weight the Mudavadi has. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think Gideon has any chance uh, you know, even if he vice, if he don't vice, uh, he comes from Rift Valley, and Rift Valley is, uh, you can actually tell the scenario or what is going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think with Angula and, 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 and uh, Gideon, right. uh, they're too small compared to, in comparison to Mudavad. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why people are focusing on Mudavadi is that uh, uh, Western Kenya in in 2013? I, I think you got 500,000 plus, more than half a million votes. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, the man is more matured, and he, he supported Raila in 2017. Mm -hmm. You saw the numbers Raila got from Western. Mm -hmm. So he is he, he's, he's a stronger man compared to the other two. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question will be where will you place him? And uh, I think UDA, the deputy president has been very consistent mm -hmm. and saying that uh, uh, we don't require or this country does not need uh, uh, political parties in each and every corner. So if, if he goes alone, I think uh, he, the mathematics will not balance for Azimio or Moja. Yeah. But... Uh, I think I, for Mudavadi, it will be a wise for him to join UDA. Okay. That's what I think. So where <laughs> do you put him? Is, <laughs> Gideon is already there. Yes. He's in one, 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 it's called Oka, eh? Mm -hmm. One Kenya Alliance. One Kenya Alliance right. is there. The other day he's with Baba. I think uh, Gideon is, 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 is already in Azimio. Mm. So if Gideon is there, if uh, Baba will have his running mate from Mount Kenya, then uh, Wetangula, the same case, might end up in, in as you, my colleague was saying, that he has been in the government so many years. Mm -hmm. So where will you put uh, Mudavadi? That's a question I would, love, I would love to get that answer from you, because it seems like you have an answer to that. Um, where will Mudavadi be, either on both sides, where will Deputy President William Ruto put Musalia? Or where will Honorable Borello Dinga put Musalia? Uh, you had a point to put across, Tony. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, there's something called the BBI. Mm. And uh, during the Jamul, Jamuhuri celebrations, mm -hmm. the President said um, that the BBI uh, uh, project yes. is just a dream defined. Now, that one, of course, also changes a lot of uh, way how people will be dealing with the politics mm. and how about what they want. Mm. Because if he's saying it's a dream deferred, uh, then it means um, if, for example, yes. Baba becomes the president, mm -hmm. I'm sure that will be his agenda number one mm. to ensure that he marshals people on the ground to make sure that the BBI goes. Because this BBI was very, was, it was very impromptu. It would become a crash program, as in just putting it on people. However, if now he becomes president yeah. and he has all the machinery, to push these things. He'll have the time to ensure there's that change in the constitution. And that way, he will, that will be a carrot that he can dangle to His mm. Excellency Musalia Mudavadi mm. of ANC. I don't know if Musalia will pick up that carrot. But it is something that, um, that can be easily be a tool or uh, a strategy to try and get Mudavadi on board. Because yeah. it is very cold to be outside the government. And you've seen the government is behind one candidate. And if you can see that, you definitely know there, is, there are two things that are happening here. Now, you remember someone said, uh, I don't know if it's um, uh, the Gatundu South M Member of Parliament, Kuria, say that uh, before someone, I don't know who it is, forgive me if I've... Uh, there's someone who said that before someone becomes president, they have to be the official opposition. And this one comes it to was, someone who's very close. This Murade. Yes, exactly. Yes. Someone very close to the president. Someone very close to the deep state. Right. What does that tell you? Okay. 
you, you referred to what Mr. Murade said during Jamuri Day. Uh, he was responding to a question which was posed to one of the journalists from another station, and he said that, you know what, my, my friend, uh, nobody has ever become a president of this country before becoming an opposition leader. So, you know, whatever you do, that information is, is, you know, is, is, <laughs> is up to you. Uh, yes, Edon. Uh, let me say this. Uh, you know, the, 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 the manners of the deep state, mm. deep state and the systems, uh, I think those things are irrelevant. We are the deep states. Me, you, him, and the rest of the voters. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when, when, when they come up and say, you know, we, unless you become the of official opposition, mm. unless you must have tried this number of times, and they're making references of what happened in Zambia, I don't know that guy who, who tried how many times. That's not the case. This thing will be decided by the voters. And uh, whether people gang up against the DP, whether people say that we are the deep state, mm. we are the systems, no. For us, when you say Mchoro, we are talking to that person down there. We are Mamamboga Kochini. And uh, what counted will be the votes. And uh, it's your vote, my vote, him, and the rest that is going to be counted. So Manena, your deep state and those things mm -hmm. will be very relevant in 2022. Secondly, President Uhuru is an outgoing president. Yes. And uh, for me, I foresee where he will be just like the former president, Moi Kibaki, who did a great job and walked out of the state house without supporting any 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 of the of the party mm -hmm. and uh, if uhuru comes out president uhuru comes out and says that he's into this thing and he's going to support raila for presidency mm. and he goes out to the crowd to start campaigning my friend UD, UD is going to to gain more but do you, do you think that as an individual he has that personal responsibility? I, I, I do not think so. I do not think so. He, he, he did what he was supposed to, mm. to be done. And uh, there were issues during his time, but uh, he also did well in certain yeah. projects. You know, they are flagship projects that uh, will be carried in his legacy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he, he will be... I think it will be just like what Moik Baki did okay. and okay. just Le goes home. Okay. You, 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 you asked me a question, but I want you to try and get me an answer to that. Where will Musele Mudavadi be? Should he get quoted and join Deputy President William Ruto? Musale, what positions? For me, at my personal level, mm -hmm. uh, Musale Mudavadi has uh, a big chance if he joins UDA. Mm -hmm. Uh, my friend here was making reference in uh, BBI whether where the president said it's just a deferred dream. Yes. Uh, BBI was a very bad thing for this country. And uh, it was a political tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's good that the reggae stopped. People say reggae stopped. And I always say the reggae died. BBI is, is dead and I think uh, whoever becomes president if you bring up the BBI issues it will only go through a referendum and uh, Kenyans I know will throw it to the dustbin yeah but uh, if he joins UDA you are Kubwa in UDA uh, we have the deputy president mm -hmm. who will be uh, the, the flag bearer of that party and we we are yet to know the running mates in due course I think we will we'll have one so, who else is... And there's no other mm -hmm. political heavyweight. So, Mudavadi will have somewhere a corner. You, in, and, in, and I'm in, happy in, he's in, confirming Musale Mudavadi will not be the running mate to uh, His Excellency William Ruto. Mm -hmm. no, that actually, is the concern that uh, Musale Mudavadi has about joining UDA. He will want to join UDA because looking at how things are on the ground, not the hula baloo about UDA. Yeah. Now he is more safer with Azimiola Umoja because at least there is something. Because you cannot say that you will give Msalia Mudavadi, His Excellency, um, a, a ministerial position in the next government if you are in UDA. 
However, in the, azim, in the azimio la umoja, it, it, I mean, it looks more enticing than going this other side. Because if you go this other side, he might just be made a CS. Honorable Msale is not fit to be a CS. Mm. I would rather even he just goes as a presidential candidate. We just know he went as a presidential candidate and became the third force than joining UDA. So, okay. the, so, then, the, uh, so then the question will be, where do you put him in Azimio La Umoja? I have not said the, we don't know the running mate, who will be the running mate of the DP. Yes. But those who are just, you know, yeah, my, the, my, the, yeah, the yeah, running mate for the DP, uh, for the Honorable Ludin. Yeah, but you know, if, if you watch the Azimio La Umoja and uh, those guys who call themselves the deep state, mm -hmm. uh, there were signs, you know, uh, still those are my personal opinion, but I will ask my friend here, mm -hmm. if Musalia joins Azimio La Umoja. Mm -hmm. Where do you put him? Is Before you answer, Tony, <laughs> uh, I, I want to take a break. I want to take a break. You just, you, where, where will you put him? I want to take a break and when you come back, we are talking about the Musala factor because uh, over the last few days, we saw that movement in Western Kenya when Deputy President won in Western Kenya and during the burial, Arborel Odinga also flew all the way from Mombasa, went to Sabatia, went to the burial, and then flew back again to Mombasa. That sent uh, a very strong signal, to, even to your enemy. All right? Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Where will Musala Mudeva go? That answer coming up shortly after this. Welcome back, and we're still having a conversation here with the two gentlemen, the two young and um, energetic, ready to go. They, that's how they're calling themselves, ready, energetic, and ready to go. The future is young. All right, talking to Adam Mohamed, who is aspiring member of parliament of Kamukoji constituency in Nairobi County, as well as Tony Kualanda, who is a journalist by profession and is also eyeing that particular seat of member of county assembly in Kakamega County, that is Manda Shivanga word all right gentlemen so uh adan asked a question tony exactly where we're picking it from so where will musele mudavadi go um you know in government you remember uh, there's a time that the uh, the, the, the uhuru government the mm -hmm. president uhuru government was so congested with so many supporters he had to form the cas positions mm -hmm. so as imiola umoja being supported and being pushed by the government yes it just tells you that there will be many positions that will be created now uda are not sure about what position they can give Masalia mm. because you can be certain the deputy president dr honorable william ruto is going to select a running mate this is my opinion from mount kenya region sure now that one put, where does that put Musalia? It becomes Musalia becomes a CS by automatic, unless they put another high position somewhere that can they can create or put him in parliament or put him in senate or put him in whatever. Mm. See, there, there'll be no place clear path where Musalia can can go to in UDA. However, in the Azimio la Umoja, just the way the handshake gave hope to Uhu, to Raila yes. is the same way the Azimio la Umoja with. Raila is giving hope to Musalia because Musalia knows yenye hapa government in a skuma hii wacha nikae huku because if honorable Musalia makes that mistake mistake according to Kwalanda mistake of going with UDA ataka kwa baridi for the next 5 or 10 years but he is guaranteed of being in the joto Gazibo, mm -hmm. if he stays as Mio, just the way Uhuru Alipatia handshake, Raila na Raila kakwa na hope, and that's yeah. why it's bubbling. And that's the same way Honorable Musalia needs to do, unless he decides to go do, as, do a, really as a horse aware. and just do, remain yes. as a single do, horse. Do you really think that Honorable Musalia is aware to, to that fact? Um, Adam? My friend uh, Kolunda has just confirmed one thing to me, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, in his statement, he says... Uh, Azimio la Umoja, which is being pushed by the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, that clearly still tells you that uh, he is putting Baba as the government project, right? So, uh, and then he says he should not be in the Baridi. Uh, 
And for me, I think he has a good chance if he joins UDA. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the Azimio La Umoja team believes that uh, they will be the next government. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's uh, Musalia is, he has been a seasoned politician. At the end of the day, I think, for me, I believe this guy will make a, a, a very good move, a serious move. And uh, let's wait and see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's wait and see. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's wait and see. Look, look at how, uh, how many, um, for, I'm just using this, he's met uh, the diplomatic core. Mm. You've seen the number of times that His Excellency, Right Honorable Odinga, has met the diplomatic core. Also, the deputy president. Uh, William he does. also met yeah. the diplomatic co. But look at the frequency and the um, and, 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 and the kind of uh, diplomatic co that Raila has met and the ones that Di Piruto has met in the past few days. Look at where Raila is also in, in, uh, continentally where he's placed. He has a very high position in the Africa. He should be in, uh, in, in this uh, African Union. Now, um, look at uh, <laughs> all these things and see how the government is pushing the Azimio La Umoja candidate. And for sure, of course, Eden, you know clearly, you know clearly this is a government project <laughs> looking at the number of people who are at Kasarani. I'm sure some of the CSs who were at Kasarani, maybe they were just there because they had, be, they had to tow the line of the government. They just had to follow what they had been told by the one who appointed them. Yes. And that's why they had... Maybe they were just Kasarani there because they had to be there. Others, most of them were just there because... Mm. However, it just tells you that the government wants to push this. And remember, in 2017, uh, most of you, it was clear daylight. Um, in, it, this is my own opinion. I'm not uh, an expert to say this. Sure. But... The Azimio La Umoja currently, Raila Odinga won that election. But as people say, we have never known the truth. Uh, Wanasema, you and I clearly say Ali Biwakura. Mm -hmm. Bringing it to you that you say there is no deep state, there is no government machinery. This coming election, when you see Uhuru, Nalisema, Uhuru said it when he was giving and uh, upgrading the status of Nakuru to a capital, to a city. Yes. Alisema, kuna watu wana kimbia kimbia huku, na muzee atakuja awapite, muzee ni nani? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, Edward. Uh, you know, they say uh, you can't stop uh, an idea whose time has come. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for me, uh, people guys who were born uh, you know 2001 and uh, are they 14 1999 those mm. guys are now a new voters and uh, they don't want to hear the stories of you know who did what in the past who said what who they they no longer care this mm. digital platform mm. they no longer care <coughs> those things and uh, uh, i think those css who have uh, who are at kasarani mm -hmm. actually made uh, a grave mistake uh, you know you, you, you need the era we are going to as much as you are supporting a certain candidate uh, or you have a preference to certain political parties mm -hmm. uh, we have to move where we used to be mm. and businesses will not be done the same way we used to did it in we used to do it in 90s or in early 2000s yes uh, <coughs> these guys they are public, they are working for, for the government, mm. they are public servants, you know. Mm. And uh, whether people go to Kasarani, whether they went to Kasarani, which capacity is up to them. And uh, uh, I will repeat this because I said initially that President Uhuru is an outgoing president. And most of the governors, I think, the larger number, they are also outgoing governors. Uh, whether people meet where, where people are, whether people take the discussion in the expensive hotels, uh, whether they do what. CCUDA, my friend, to Nasema, mm. to Pataneko ground. Those deep states, those, those are just uh, theories, what one has a manga, yeah. or those. CC, you might not mm. We are going to seek. And you know, talk to the voters like like never before. Yeah. And deputy president, this guy is very energetic, and his agenda is very clear. UDA agenda is very clear now.
-hmm. You know, those countries that progressed, you know, if you read about Singapore, if you read about Malaysia, there was a serious revolution in terms of, you know, of, of, of uh, industrial revolutions. Uh, me personally, you know, I have a lot of interest in, in, in economics. I, I worked on economic growth projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I read, and I've taken time to read and analyze about the bottom-up economic model. Mm -hmm. If we base our discussion in such lines, if we talk of issues and deep state of Talala, my friend, people will listen. <laughs> what do you want to do different? Sasa what we pick kura, we sell our agenda, then they make the votes. L let me let me put it this way. Perhaps somebody can argue that the idea of having devolved government was an alternative an alternative form of the bottom up economy. Because everything has been, de de not everything, but most of the devolved units have been devolved. So we can say that a devolution was a uh, uh, you know, bottom-up economy. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I, I totally agree. So do we have to need another one? Uh, no, you know, the, the models and the discussions are different. Mm. Uh, if you listen very keenly yes, the speeches that the deputy president makes, you know, when he says Mama Boga, when he says Boda Boda, it doesn't mean that it's confined to Mama Mboga. Mm. It's like saying, you know, the Winjiku, people who are down there yes. in the Kada. Okay? So, uh, we want to strengthen. Fine, devolution is there and mm. it's helping uh, people, people, people are now having control of their resources. It's true, but we, we, we want to improve it. Mm -hmm. we, we want to reach as many, pos as many people as possible and uh, when he says that he will have funds at the constituency level, it's doable. It's doable. It's doable. Okay. Yeah. Tony, um, he's saying that uh, the, you know, the UDA is now reaching to the common money down there at the grassroots. But that is, as well, we can say that uh, Azimio Laomoji is trying to, 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 to sell to the Kenyans as well. So there's no difference in terms of their, you know, your manifesto and the agenda and what you're trying to sell to the, to the masses. Basically, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, look at <clears throat> the, the carrot or what um, uh, Henri Bright or Dingo was saying about giving uh, households a certain amount of money if he's elected. 6,000 shillings. 6,000 shillings. Actually, it's been identified that 2 million poor households will re receive that monthly stipend. Exactly. That's, yeah. b that's bottom up. Mm -hmm. He didn't say that uh, people in Karen will receive that. He said people in poor families or in needy families mm -hmm will be getting this kind of money that is bottom up mm -hmm. so there's a lot of bottom up happening yeah. however the basic thing that that the government that is currently here that has failed is to provide the basic needs yes food shelter and what housing yes um, food shelter and education, water, some education. Mm -hmm. oh, those are the Security. basic things that the government should have already provided mm. That's why Aidan is saying that he'll go to Mamamboga. Mamamboga has always been there. Mamamboga, Mutua, Wilbaro, Boda Boda, they have always been there. Mm. But what have they been doing for the last 10 years to this Mamamboga? There will be no bottom up. We'll be now be talking about from now bottom up. Now there will be middle up. Okay. 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 <laughs> I, I, I wanted to change this debate briefly and talk about um, uh, the issue of economy. All right? Um, you are all aspiring candidates for the next 2022 election, and I would like to get your, uh, your mind on the state of economy, starting with you, Eden, with your focus on matters, economy, economics, and mathematics. Where are we as a nation? Because the pandemic has really affected us greatly. We all accept that. Victor, I absolutely agree with you that mm. uh, uh, the coronavirus pandemic has affected us, actually, yeah. everywhere in the world. Uh, it's no longer the same, you know, supply chains have been affected, you know, and many other aspects. Mm. And uh, businesses are not uh, done the same way they used to be. Yes. And uh, we are not doing well. But uh, I foresee uh, uh, going forward, we, 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 we are like, this, this will be with us. The corona pandemic is here and experts are telling us this thing will be there for some time. Mm. And... Uh, I think we, we just need remedies of how to revive the economy and uh, the focus 
on, on whoever want to take over from President Uhuru uh, has to put in place remedies of how best to revive the economy. And, you know, many people, if, if you go down there, many people have lost jobs. Mm. And uh, actually, it's, it's, it's not just a normal thing. Mtani Ukifika, you see people will tell you, you know, we used to work for this uh, such a hotel. Uh, I've been employed for the past five years or six years. Like in Sayini Mekatu, Sinakitu. You know, and uh, uh, things have to be done different. Mm. If President Uhuru had, uh, like, the housing project, sure. he had the big four, they were called the, the, big, four the big four agenda. Yes. Uh, some of those things were taken over by BBI, Manenos, and, and the handshake. Uh, from the economic perspective, if some of the big four agendas were implemented. Of course, COVID will have affected in one way or the other. <clears throat> if the housing project was to be undertaken, mm. I'm telling you today, many people will have been employed. So, of course, uh, the handshake brought some sanity and, you know, it has calmed down some yeah. few things. Uh, there was the advantage part of it. But, uh, the BBI, Manenos, and all those things have stopped serious projects mm -hmm. that will have created so many jobs. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, for me, where I sit, I'm very hopeful. Uh, after the general election, <coughs> yeah. we, we are going to revive uh, the economy in one way. But even as you speak right now, everything is now slowly moving back to the Yeah, yeah, it's, it's obvious now. Tushazoe, yeah. Imambo, ya Corona. And uh, people have started now engaging businesses. People have started, uh, you know, mm. uh, some of the guys who, who uh, uh, just to lost their jobs are now coming back in, in bits and coming mm. to do their jobs. But uh, after the election, uh, we knew DA takes over. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I know they... they, they we are going to revive the economy. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's, that's, that should be the hope of every government, you know, uh, to serve, you know, its yeah. people. Tony, your state, the state of economy, as you speak, from your own perspective, it, it, it is in, it, it is shambolic. Mm -hmm. And because of two double L's. Yeah. Loans and looting. Loans and looting. Is, I think, was it just the other day, we, mm -hmm. you saw in the newspapers that IMF has extended another loan. Yes to the country of about 25 billion. So today's newspaper today. Yes, 25 billion again. Accumulating the loans that we already have from IMF. Then you also have loans we are, we are still servicing from China, from the projects that you're already seeing around. We like the projects, but honestly, Victor, uh, the economy, as you're saying, is very shambolic. Look at what's happening to Omicron. The state of uh, COVID situation in Europe, they are contemplating on closing down the economy. They're mm. contemplating on locking down because of how Omicron is ravaging their people. Now, that is the same road we're headed to. Look at the 25% positivity rate that we have currently. We are going back to where we were in the beginning. That was in May, June, when coronavirus hit us. So we are, we are so slowly getting back, as Eden is saying. However, we might find ourselves back again to mm. where we started in June last year. And that one will now even, the little businesses that people had started after being fired will die completely. And that's the agenda that now most of these candidates, Musalia, Honorable, Ruto, DP, and, and Azimio, have to really to focus on. Not to give yes. us cash handouts, but to focus on how the roadmap back to recovery with Omicron, because mm. we have this coronavirus for the next six years. Yeah. And it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, disheartening because most people, in, most people lost their jobs. People who are employed yes. are now able to get their, you know, their white-collar jobs, so to speak, back. And now people have now to go back and start to resort into different alternative means of, uh, of employment. But in, in, in terms of uh, per capita, are we likely to hit a certain percentage uh, come next year? What is your projection, economically speaking? Uh, I think it will only be hypothetical to say because mm. uh, now, as my colleague was saying, that uh, 
there's signs of lockdown in, 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 in the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, there's a serious movement between different countries. Yes. Uh, then if they are affected, we'll definitely be affected. And uh, if that happens, uh, we, we pray that it will, it will not happen. If that happens, then we'll slide back. Then there will be no much uh, growth. But uh, just to add on what my colleague was saying, uh, we have borrowed a lot. It's not bad to borrow, fine. But uh, how? what happens to the money we borrowed? How will it end up? We have serious wastages in this country. And where, you know, the money you borrowed ends up in other people's pocket. The money you borrowed is not uh, sufficiently used in where it's supposed to go. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, and God forbid, if there will be a lockdown, hard times are ahead. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, in the case that, uh, and we we are we are prayerful. Mm. Uh, if uh, things will be normal, mm. then we expect between a very minimal uh, growth. Growth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, gentlemen, um, I want us to do something uh, quite different here today uh, on the show. We've never done this before. <coughs> uh, being that you are all youthful and you are eyeing uh, political seats, you are the leaders of tomorrow. I'm going to give you two minutes each, and I want to give you a test, um, what you're going to talk about today. Um, we are going to talk about youth agenda and leadership. So I'm going to give you two minutes each, talk about youth agenda and leadership <coughs> nationally. If you are elected a leader today, tell me what you're going to talk about as a youth, what you'll deliver as part of your agenda, <coughs> and what is in the leadership of a youth. I'm going to have a stopwatch here with me. Um, <coughs> director, we don't have a bell here today. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to use this, ah, yes, this one's going to act as my bell, but of course I'm going to have a stopwatch. So, starting with you, Adan, in two minutes, starting right now, talk about youth agenda and leadership, and that is your camera starting now. Uh, thank you, Victor and my colleague here. First of all, uh, let me speak to the, the young full population of the nation. Uh, I will tell them that by our numbers, whatever the case, uh, whichever the party, and this time around, come 2022 general election, by our numbers, we have to have a serious representation in both assemblies, at the county level, the Senate and, 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 and the National Assembly. Uh, for me, where I come from, Kemkunji is a diversified uh, constituency. And I think it's a, a serious contributor of the county revenue. Uh, we have businesses going there. Kemkunji people are doing serious business. We have the Gikomba market, we have the Bama, and we have the Juakali, the biggest one, and we have the Isli market. It requires someone who can uh, synergize those businesses, someone who can bring people together, someone who can drive the agenda. Mm -hmm. And in terms of leadership, uh, and we have got what it takes. Uh, the youth of this country, we have the skills, and we have the energy, and we, we have the, the know-how. You have 30 seconds. The moment we put those things together, then we are going to move at the constituency level and the national level we are going to make difference thank you all right uh stop one minute 39 seconds <laughs> i have it there one minute and 39 seconds all right um, i'm not this uh, i'm going to be the iebc of today no <laughs> leaking one minute 39 seconds uh we will we'll, we'll vote after this we'll have uh, you know vote we'll vote on who, who who wins and reset one minute 39 seconds note it down one minute 39 and reset now tony talk about youth agenda and leadership in two minutes starting now youth uh, it is our time you and i let no one ever discourage you that you cannot stand for any elective position 
I've had a lot of discouragements that you will fail, you don't have the money, you don't have the capacity, you don't have the will, but young people, it is our time. I'm encouraging you because I have grown through the same steps you've gone through from walking to school to where I am now. There is hope. You can go to school, you can be whoever you want. In fact, I use my hashtag to Naweza. Young people, it is our time. The old people are getting tired, they're getting slower. Let's not allow the economy to go slower. Let's now take up from them, ask for guidance from the old people, and let's take these leadership positions. Of course, I have told you, basic needs are the things that my people require in the world that I'm standing, in Manda Shivanga. Manda Shivanga Wood is a very blessed economy, is a blessed world, is a blessed area. Because we are farmers, we do a lot of sugarcane farming. Now, my agenda is very simple. One, food for you. Two, shelter for you. Three, water. Now, these things, I've just summarized them because it can come to education, it will come to electricity, it will come to roads, it will come to the projects that we will initiate together with the people of Manda Shivanga Ward to ensure that, as Aidan has said, bottom up, we have money from bottom up, we have money that can sustain ourselves because jobs are not forthcoming. So it's upon you and I, the ones who have blood damu moto, for us to stand, get up in groups, start projects, and make money. Tunaweza, Mambo Fresh, Manda Shivanga Ward, na wapenda sana. Stop. One minute, 46 seconds. Time is up. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first one, Eden, was one minute, 39 seconds. Tony, one minute, 46 seconds. I'm going to take a vote. Um, based on what Eden has said, his, uh, his vision for the youth agenda and leadership, as well as Tony, uh, who do you think has won? Will as many as that popular opinion to Tony say aye? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Will as that as that uh, similar opinion say nay to Tony? Okay, to Tony, I have it. What about to Adam? Similar opinion say aye? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> similar opinion say nay. The I has have it. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so, thank thank you so, so much for Asante. being a part of this show. Appreciate we can never have this discussion much enough because the future of this particular country belongs to the youth. Yeah. And that's even sure. what the president sure. has been talking about, that the youth must come out and fight for their rightful position. We've been speaking to Tony Kualanda, who is a sports journalist by profession. And Tony, just before I let you go, uh, gentlemen, we have a debacle in the football uh, football fraternity. The FK boss is facing you know, a litany of court cases. Yes. What is your stand as a sports journalist who's even had and even won you know, awards in, in the profession? What do you think? Is it high time that we should change the sports uh, management right now and how people who've played football run that sector. We have got Samuel Eto in Cameroon running that that's yes. that that's that, that, that the department. Federation, yes. yes. And I'm very happy because the government took over um, this matter. It, it, I mean it was going to have its own repercussions. Mm. FIFA started threatening us left and right. Yeah. But I think the government has got into some diplomatic talks with the FIFA in yeah. terms of trying to sort this for Labadu. Mm. This is a transition. I'm happy we have a caretaker committee because we want to put things in order. Mm. And um, this one, of course, will now be a transition into allowing and uh, making it possible, just the way youth can take leadership, allowing other footballers, yes. allowing other uh, key stakeholders in football to take up those positions. Because currently, mm. the constitution only favors people who have money, who have positions, who have the muscle yeah. to stay there. That's why you've seen people coming through politics, coming there, then moving away. This time, we don't want these things in football. Please caretaker committee kinalindo ugutu ensure that transition mm. gets and ensures our footballers the uliaches the makamagrigas the kinawanyamas take up those positions so that you can run football the way it's meant to be absolutely all right gentlemen allow me to tell you that thank you so much we, they, they are not they're not enemies by there you can shake hands you can go to Anna. they're not <laughs> to me sanitize <laughs> thank you so much bro. Sanitizes. Exactly. thank you and all the best thank you so much all right we are so uh, living at that particular point we've been talking to adam mohammed who is uh, an economist by profession of course but is also vying for kamukunji constituency member of parliament come next year thank you so much for joining us as well as tony kualanda here who is a journalist by profession but is saying that's now time for dropping that pen and notebook and going to represent us in the county assembly gentlemen all the best thank you so thank much. you so much you, even you as well thank you so much let's meet tomorrow and by the way merry christmas
starting now. Let's meet more. Bye-bye. Asante. Asante.